This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Dear siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. He doesn't say a word. He simply shuffles out of the tomb, wrapped in grave cloth, and probably needing a shower. Don't you wish you could have been there to ask him? Lazarus, what was it like? Lazarus, did you see a bright light? Lazarus. Who was there? But alas, John doesn't ask these questions and Lazarus doesn't give us a clue. He just shuffles out and stands there like a gift waiting to be unwrapped. The Lazarus story is unique to John and it is, as you'll soon hear, a disturbing story that includes most of chapter 11. But the reading today that we just heard is only really the unfolding of the story at the end. So let's look a little bit at what's happened. Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus. And the story begins with him receiving a note from Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters. And the note simply says, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. No urgency, no plea to come quickly. Lazarus is simply ill. Does he have a cold? Is it the flu? Couldn't have been COVID. And it doesn't appear to be life-threatening because Jesus says when he receives the note that this illness will not end in death. Can you imagine receiving a call from your doctor who's miles and miles away without seeing you, giving you that diagnosis? Oh, don't worry, you're not going to die. Jesus is so relaxed about this situation, he waits two more days before he leaves to walk to Bethany. And when he arrives, Lazarus is already in the tomb. He's been dead four days. And according to Jewish custom, that meant that Lazarus was dead, dead. Their belief was that after four days, the soul would leave the body after the body began to lose its deodorant freshness. Being dead for four days meant no chance for revival. Interestingly, both Mary and Martha greeted Jesus the same way. They didn't appear to be mad at him. They simply said, Lord, if you had been there, my brother wouldn't have died. No bitterness no accusation of fault, no blame, just a statement of fact. And now Lazarus has been dead these four days, and there's lots of weeping going on. But Jesus' own response is a little bit puzzling when you look a little deeper at it. We're told he was deeply moved, but the Greek word means far more than that. It means anger, righteous wrath, strong indignation. Jesus Jesus wasn't just deeply moved. Yes, he was saddened by Lazarus' death, but he was so upset he was ready to explode with righteous wrath. Why? Why would he be angry? Well, the reason, I think, is found in the weeping. Now, we can all relate to tears, for we've all experienced the sorrow at funerals. So when we see the word weeping, we give it little attention. That's what we expect would happen. But what's going on here in the weeping is far greater than just a few tears. The Greek word for weeping that Mary and the Jews are doing is a word called klio, which means tears associated with loud mourning. They were crying and crying out. They were professional mourners. Oh, Lazarus, oh, Lazarus, oh, no. Mourning and wailing. The Greek word for Jesus weeping is a different word, klio. And it means crying without sound. 
but with an absolute flood of tears. Jesus was so angry the dam broke. His tears were just pouring, pouring out. He cried a river of tears not just because of the frailty of life and the randomness for which it's been snuffed out. He's standing there in his sorrow for Lazarus. His humanity is laid bare, but his anger and tears are because people just don't get him. They don't get him. Not even his dear friends Mary and Martha. His tears flowed because people just didn't understand what he was about or even believe it. He cried a flood of tears at the enormity of what God had called him to do. And the specter before him, which was Jerusalem and the cross. Even faithful Martha, who had just confessed that Jesus was the Messiah of God, failed in her belief when she took Jesus to the tomb. Don't open that tomb, Jesus, as the King James Version so vividly states, he stinketh. Where is her faith in the Messiah of God now? Imagine now Jesus standing before the tomb, anger, righteous wrath, flood of tears, not understood, failing belief all around him. His cry to Lazarus was not spoken softly or politely. His, he bellowed with a force that would wake all of the dead. Lazarus, come out! And then there stands Lazarus, bound in grave cloth, wondering what the heck just happened. Lazarus, who will say nothing. Lazarus, who will not give us a clue as to what we can expect. Lazarus, who has faced death before, and now, after all this, must face it again. He's a walking miracle with a temporary reprieve, because sooner or later, he will be carried back to the tomb. Dear friends, like all of the saints before us, we must all finally pass beyond our earthly life. As fervently as we pray for healing and long life, as glad as we are when those prayers are granted, we must all finally die. And that is the deepest mystery that each of us must face. Like Mary and Martha, we appeal to some higher power that will protect us from it. Like Jesus, we will weep with the enormity of the sadness and, and the anger at it. Like Lazarus, we will find no words that make any sense of the mystery of life and death. And is there anything in the world we wouldn't like better than to have it make sense, to know why, when, how we die, to know that death fits in the divine scheme of things, to have reliable evidence that death is just a dark door into a brighter world where everything will make sense. And in our cloud of unknowing, we cry out, why? Why? Why me? Why my spouse? Why my child? Why this? Why now? As if our understanding would make our fears and our tears go away. Tell us why, God. Tell us why. And maybe we can offer a convincing argument, why not? Tell us anything we can handle. But, but don't just ask us to believe. Believe what, that everything will be okay? How, God? Will I still be the same? Please, God, give us something to work with. Don't you care that we perish? Give us something to hold on to. Why, why, my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? That is the cry that has always come from the human heart. Why? Why me? Why this? Why now? Those are strong words, strong questions to ask the creator of the universe. But they are the truth of how we feel when we cannot make sense of what happens to us, when we're not given a reason, when we feel abandoned, forsaken, or alone. But we are never alone. We are never alone. 
the patriarchs and matriarchs, the prophets, our saints, and even Jesus himself have joined us in these feelings and in these words. And they are feelings and words we must not hide. To have faith in God. To have faith that we are in God's good hands. To have faith that whether or not we understand it, this creation of God does make sense. Accepting that reality is not easy. To trust that it is all true. To step out into nothingness and in faith trust in God's grace and the love of Jesus Christ for the answers that our hearts long for. Dear friends, it all depends on faith, on whom we believe in, and if we believe. That faith, that trust means that when it is our time, we can step out and let go. Let go of our illusions of control. Let go of our fears and step into whatever God-given, death-defying mystery will come next. I invite you to listen to this poem. Perhaps it's what Lazarus might have told us if he had had the chance. The grave cloths surround me like layers of sin. My soul sleeps in darkness where light's never been. A life walked in sorrow, never finding the way, no mystery unfolded in the light of the day. The greed and the excess were what mattered the most of fine wine and fine cars. My God, I could boast. But in darkness so thick, I can't taste my tears. I suffer in sadness, knowing only my fears. Somewhere in the darkness, a voice calls my name as I quietly lay here, alone in my shame. But that voice so familiar grows louder and near. My soul leaps with joy, released from its fear. The shepherd has found me in my darkness and then. He carries me safely to a place without sin. The grave cloths unbound, my soul is set free. Salvation, resurrection, the shepherd's grace given me. May it always be so. Amen.